and we meet the singer performing to raise money for Ukraine. And how an elderly Ukrainian woman has become the unlikely face of pro-war Russian propaganda. Russia says it has opened a humanitarian corridor from the bombarded eastern Ukrainian city of Severodonetsk. The Russian army says the safe route for some besieged residents will last for 12 hours and take convoys of people north to occupied territories. Hundreds of civilians are said to be trapped in a huge chemical plant in Severodonetsk, sheltering with those Ukrainian troops who are still resisting the Russian assault there. Well, meanwhile, an elderly Ukrainian woman has become the new and somewhat unlikely face of Kremlin propaganda. In Russia, she is known as Babushka Z. Babushka meaning grandmother. Murals, placards and even statues of her clutching the Soviet flag have appeared all over the country. But how did a woman from a small Ukrainian village become the face of the war for many Russians? And what does she make of all the fuss? Our reporter, Sofia Batitsa, travelled to Kharkiv to meet her. Grandmother with the Soviet flag. In Russia, she is known as Babushka Z and has become one of the main symbols of support for the war in Ukraine. It all started with this video back in April. Babushka walks towards two Ukrainian soldiers. They offer her some food. Then they take the flag off her and stamp on it. So the woman, feeling insulted, gives back the food. My parents died for that flag, she says. For the Kremlin, this was propaganda gold dust. A rare example of a Ukrainian who regrets the collapse of the Soviet Union and looks at Russians as liberators. Within days, Babushka started to appear everywhere in Russia. Murals, drawings, clothes, toys, bumper stickers, poems and songs dedicated to her. Russian officials even unveiled a statue of her in Mariupol. In a small village near Kharkiv, we tracked down Babushka. Her name is Anna. This is the flag of peace and love, not of bloodshed. We show her photos of her fame, and she is gobsmacked. I don't think they should glorify me. I'm just a peasant woman. I don't understand why I've become a celebrity. So why did Anna greet Ukrainian soldiers with a Soviet flag? She says she confused them with Russian soldiers. I was just happy that Russians would come and not fight with us. I was happy we would unite again, Russia, Ukraine and Belarus. Do you support what Russia is doing in Ukraine? No. How can I support my people dying? My grandchildren and great-grandchildren were forced to escape to Poland. This is fear and horror. And here, just outside, you can see shells fired by the Russians. So even though in Moscow she's become a star and a symbol of supposed Russian liberation, her village has not been spared by Vladimir Putin's forces. Anna is being attacked online. All her neighbours shun her. Do you regret becoming a symbol in Russia? Of course, I'm not happy about it. I'd much rather not be famous, because now in Ukraine they consider me a traitor. As we say goodbye to her, Anna tries to give us her beloved red flag. I don't want any trouble, she says. I don't want people to ever use it against me. Sofia Betiza, BBC News, Kharkiv. The spike in global food prices is a direct consequence of the war in Ukraine. The head of NATO said today Ukraine produces more than 12% of the world's wheat and millions of tonnes of grain are currently trapped inside the country. NATO chief Jens Stoltenberg rejected Russia's claim that the spike in global food prices was the result of sanctions against Russia. 
Meanwhile, President Biden has announced the U.S. will be giving $1 billion of weapons to Ukraine. It's understood they'll include anti-ship rocket systems and artillery rockets. He's also announced an additional $225 million in humanitarian assistance. In Ukraine itself, a friend of a former British soldier who was fighting alongside him when he was killed today described him as a hero. Jordan Gatley died during the fierce battle for Severodonetsk in eastern Ukraine. Today, a comrade who's been on several missions with him told ITV News that Mr Gatley was providing covering fire for his unit so they could escape Russian fire when he was fatally hit. He spoke to our Europe editor, James Mates. The battle for the strategic city of Severodonetsk in eastern Ukraine has become one of the bloodiest of this whole brutal war. Ukrainians losing as many as 100 troops every day. Last Friday, one of the dead was Jordan Gatley, a British Army veteran who had volunteered to lead, to train, to fight alongside Ukrainian forces. Today, Anton, a combat engineer, with eight years' service in the Canadian military, described the near hand-to-hand -hand fighting that he and Jordan were engaged in on the day his friend and comrade was killed. No more than 10 to 20 metres away from the enemy, close contact. Um, you're as close as you can hear them speak. That's how close you are to them. Um, a lot of artillery, a lot of armoured. We got engaged with Russian Special Forces units. Jordan. Um, went down a level to provide us covering fire for the team to go down the stairs. And that is unfortunately when he was shot. Um, it was a very dire situation as we had a T-72 tank approaching us. So we had to make a move very quickly or the chances to survive would have been minimal. He was providing all of you with covering fire? Uh, yes, he was at the level before, below us. And that enabled you to escape? Yes. Were you aware immediately that he had been hit? Uh, we tried calling out for him. We weren't able to call out to him. He wasn't responding. Uh, that is when other members of our unit were we called up for assistance. And that's when they were able to come up their stairs and uh, see Jordan. And he had passed away from his injuries. And you were able to retrieve his body immediately? Uh, Yes, we yes we did. Uh, under no circumstances uh, were we going to leave his body. Jordan would have never done that to any of us, so we would never do it for him. The two men have been brothers in arms, first in southern Ukraine, then in the east. We've done many operations prior to that, being behind enemy lines. He was our he was our navigation guy. He was very good at nav. So he was just an incredible guy, always volunteering first for everything, always watching over his members of his of our section and for his unit check in on guys. He was a very incredible individual and he's nothing less than a hero to, in my eyes, and to the members of our section and to the Legion. On Maidan Square in the centre of Kiev, there is a memorial to Ukraine's war dead with a special place marked out in memory of the foreign volunteers who've given their lives for this country. Victory will be ours because the members that we do have in our unit and the soldiers of Ukraine are just like Jordan. And Jordan's sacrifice will have had a value. Jordan's sacrifice would have a tremendous value towards the victory. James Mates, ITV News, Ukraine. Now turning to Ukraine, and one Londoner has been singing to raise money for the country. Carly Davis, whose mother is from Kyiv, has been performing the song Whatever Happened, which was written following news reports about the conflict. Talu Adeoye has been to meet the family. What I do remember from Ukraine is I remember my school very well. This was my kindergarten, funnily enough. And I do remember it was absolutely lovely. Nina was a child when her family left Ukraine more than 50 years ago as political refugees. Decades on, the images of her motherland under attack today have been hard to bear. It's devastating to see it. And for what reason? For what possible reason could, could, could there be? They were brothers, and now it's, it's brother against brother. I, I, I just don't get it, and it doesn't seem to, to have an end. 
Now her daughter Carly is the voice behind a new single written to show solidarity with Ukraine. Whatever happened to our world? Whatever happened to the love we used to share? Because of my mum's connection with Ukraine, because obviously she was born there, she was born in Kiev, it makes doing the song so much more, um, so much more important and it means so much more to be singing it as the daughter of someone who was born there. So many shattered dreams. Carly was asked to sing Whatever Happens by songwriter and producer Stuart Carr. He wrote it after watching the news coverage of the war. I was so saddened and horrified while I was watching. Uh, I was on my own and I was just sitting in front of the TV and I just said to myself, whatever, whatever's happened to the world, what's going on? And uh, a tune came into my head and some lyrics. <laughs> Carly will be performing the song at fundraising events around the UK. She and her mother hope the plight of the people of Ukraine won't be forgotten. Tolu Adeoye, BBC London.